Hi everyone, uh, this is Chauke speaking, I'm a facilitator of building and structural construction N5 at Majuba Tivet College. So again, we're still going to be looking at uh, topic bolt connections. So this will be our part two. Okay, so still our reference book will be by J. Bishop. You remember um, in our part one, right, we dealt with shear stress. So here we're going to be dealing with uh, both compression stress as well as tensile stress. All right. You remember that all three stresses are taking place at the same time. All right. However, the difference is that where exactly is the stress in the connection? All right. So that's what differentiate the three stresses. So let's have a look at bearing stress, which is also known as crushing stress. Okay. So what do we have here? We've got these two ties here connected by the means of bolt. So if it happens that our bolt is stronger than the ties, what's going to happen is that the bolt is going to push itself out of the connection, if you can see here. All right. So there we go. So this is the red uh, area there, which is under stress. So the bolt is pressing against the, the walls of the ties. All right. So... That's the red area which is under compression there. Okay. So if it happens that the these two ties are not strong, so the ball is gonna push it, it, it itself out of the connection, as I said. So now there again the area that is gonna be under stress. Alright. So this T it is the height of the tie okay and then d it is the size of the bolt so this is the typical formula for stress force over area so now for the compression stress the formula is force over ndt all right so dt is the area which is compressed okay so now um, FC is a bearing stress or compression stress or crushing stress. F is the load. N is the number of bolts. D is the diameter of bolt. And T is the thickness of plate or tie. Okay. So now let's have a look at um, this example here. What do we have? We've got these two ties connected together by means of four bolts. All right. The thickness of the tie. This one is 10, this one is 8, and they are subjected to 100 kilonewtons force. All right. We are given the size of the bolt, which is 20 millimeters, as well as the size of the hole, which is 22 millimeters. Okay. So the compression stress or crushing stress here, it is force over NDT, as we have explained. Now, taking in... Um, the known F is 100 multiplied by 1000 to make it uh, newtons. All right. Four is what? It is the number of bolts. So we have four bolts here. All right. So all four bolts, remember, are connected to both the members. So we've got four times 20. What is 20? Is the size of the bolt. All right. And T. It is the thickness of the plate. So you can see that here we are using 8. And why 8? Eight? 8 it is because now it is the smallest between the two. Why are we think the smallest? Because this one has got smaller area. And if the area is less, the stress is bigger. So this is the one that is going to fail first compared to this one. So now the stress that is going to be experienced by this is going to be 156,25 MPa. Right? So, now, if we look at the second example, here we've got a bad joint connected to or connected by two connector plates. The size of the plate is 8 millimeters and the size 
of the tie is 12. All right. So if you look at this now, you've got three bolts connecting um, this member here and the three bolts connecting this member there. The force is 120 again. And this time around, we're given a 20 millimeter rivet. You'll also remember we dealt this, uh, we dealt with this um, rivet uh, when we're dealing with um, shear stress. And the size of the hole is 22. Right? So the typical formula is this one here. Now, 120 multiplied by 10 to the power 3, we are converting to newtons. All right? And the number of bolts. All right. You remember why 3 is because we know that this 3 has got nothing to do with the, this member here. And this 3 uh, has got nothing to do with this member here. So when it comes to lap uh, joint, you only take a uh, number of bolts for one side. So we're taking 3 here. Multiply by 22. Multiply by 12. All right. So now look at this. Y12 to T is the thickness. All right. So if you look at here now, you've got um, 12 and 8 and 8. All right. So we understand that the connector plate are acting together. All right. So because of that, we add the 2. So 8 plus 8 gives us 16. And because it's 16, 16 is bigger than 12. So remember, we're looking for the weaker member. So because 12 is less than 16, we take 12 and then we substitute here. And then we get 151,52 MPA. So MPA. All right. So now let's go to... The second stress. The second stress is tensile stress. Okay. It's also known as tearing stress. All right. Now, where is this stress taking place? Again, we have these two ties here connected by means of a bolt. So if it happens that our bolt is more strong compared to these members here, what's going to happen is that our member is going to tear when it's subjected to a stress. All right. Instead of a bolt shearing, and or instead of our bolt pushing itself out of the connection, our member might as well shear or tear. Sorry. All right. So that's a, uh, a tearing stress or tensile stress we are talking about. So. That's what's happening here. So this is a member or the red um, sh or shaded um, shade here is the area that is going to tear. Okay. And you'll see that it's tearing through a hole. What, why through the hole? It is because this is the weakest uh, link. Okay. Our hole is the weakest, uh, weakest link. So there we go. So this is the stressed area, the red area here. So this is the empty space. That's where our hole is. Okay. So let's look at um, the formula. All right. So there we have our member. All right. Now, so the red area is the area that is going to tear. So this is the breadth of the member. Let's go back. Can you see this is the breadth of the member here? All right, that is tearing. All right. And this is the thickness of the member. All right. And now D, it is the size of the hole. So what we're doing here, we want to take the whole area. All right. But subtract the empty area. So that's what's happening here. Because where there's a hole, no stress is taking place. No stress taking place. All right? So what do we have here? We have the general formula for tension or for stress, which is force over area.
Okay. So now the stress or cheering stress is equal to F over T into B minus N D T. All right. So this area is all about what? It's all about the red area because it's, this is the area that is going to be under stress minus the empty space. So it's the total area minus the empty uh, space here, which will give us this red or shaded area, which is going to be stressed. So FT is equals to tearing stress, F, the load, N, the number of holes, D, the diameter of a hole. Remember, not a ball this time, a hole, all right? D, the diameter of a hole, T, the thickness of a tie or a plate, and B, the breadth of a tie or plate. All right. So let's have a look at uh, some examples here. We've got a lap joint. All right. Now, what we have is this lap joint, the member one is 10 millimeter thick, the member two is 8 millimeter thick. All right. And then subject to 100 kilonewtons force and then it has got four bolts and the breadth of the uh, member or the the, 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 the the tie is 250 millimeters we are given that the size of a bolt is 20 and the size of the hole is 22 okay so this is the formula here as we discussed so let's substitute um, the nodes Right, we are given F, which is 100 kilonewtons. So 100 multiplied by 10 by uh, 10 to the power 3 to give us newtons. All over T, which is 8. You remember why 8? This is the weakest member. All right. This is the member that is going to fail first. So now into B, B we are given to be 250 minus... 2, right. Why 2 now? Number of holes. Remember, it's no longer number of bolts. But we've got two, 4 holes. Why 2? It is because the tearing that is going to take place is going to be the through the, the line of holes which is closest to the edge. So it is not very possible that um, you're going to have tearing through here and through here at the same time. It's either it's going to tear through here or tear through here. It is not possible that it's going to tear here and there at the same time. So you take the first line of the holes which is closest to the edge. So this time around, you just take this one or you could take this one. So now that's why you have two. So now multiply by D. It's 22. Remember, D is not the size of a bolt. It's the size of the hole. All right. For tearing, it is the size of a hole. Okay. And then, you multiply, you get what? 60,68 MPA. Okay. So, that is the stress. And if we continue... We've got bad joint with two connector plates. All right. Now, let me clarify something here. Remember, as much as this, if we're dealing with shear stress, was going to be double shear, there is no way it's going to apply here. We don't have double uh, bearing or double tensile. So, you don't put two. All right. Students always make mistake there. You don't put two. You will only have double shear or single shear when it comes to shear stress. All right. So now we have got two connector plates, eight millimeters, eight millimeters, and twelve. Right. And then the size of the of our force is one twenty kilonewtons, and the breadth is one uh, is two fifty. We've got three number of bolts this side. And we've got three number of bolts on the other side. All right. We are given that 
the um, we are using 20 millimeter rivet and the size of the hole is 22 millimeters all right so this is our general formula or the formula for cheering okay let's look at what we have here force is 120 multiplied by 10 to the power 3 all right over what is uh, t it is 12 why 12 again it is because if you add the two we know that the plates are working together so you add their sizes if you find that the, 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 the value you get is more than this one now you take this one if this value was less than that you are going to take that value the combined value all right so the combined value is 16 and then here is 12 all right so you're going to take 12 into b which is 250 minus 2 y2 2 is the number of holes y2 is because the line of balls closest to the edge is two forget about this so it's not possible that it's gonna tear here and tear there at the same time all right so it's gonna tear through the first line of holes which is closest to the edge remember that when it comes to tearing so we have two all right even on the other side it's gonna to be two all right so it's gonna be two times 22 why 22 22 is the size of the hole. So the answer there is 48 MPa. So that is the stress. Just to summarize everything, going back to um, part one, where we're dealing with shearing. All right. So shear stress for lab joint was 79. All right. Compression, we got 156. Tearing, we got 60. So now, remember, all these stresses are taking place at the same time. All right. So our connection is subject to all these stress, all these three stresses. So if you compare the three, the smallest value is sixty, which signifies that this one is the safest. So the weakest is this one. Why? Because it's the biggest. With the same force, it is experiencing more stress than the other two so this one is the weakest this one is the safest you can also compare when it comes to bite joint the same thing goes this is the safest if this video you're watching it on youtube and you have any questions please go to comment section i hope you enjoyed this lesson thank you